Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The term drone refers to any sized flying vehicle that can be operated remotely without the need for an onboard pilot. Since the early 2000s, Air Forces worldwide have invested billions of dollars into this technology. creating multiple aircraft to perform a wide range of missions. The reason for this is simple. Drones are small, fast, and can be safely operated without risking the lives of pilots or crew members. Despite these benefits, drones like this MQ-9 Reaper have all the capabilities of a full-sized, fully manned aircraft. They can take off and land easily, fire weapons, drop bombs, and perform detailed reconnaissance assignments deep into hostile territory, often at extremely high altitudes. In fact, since 2006, more than 300 MQ-9s have been commissioned by the United States, UK Royal Air Force, and Italian Air Force. Many have even seen combat in various campaigns all around the world. The MQ-9 program was the first large-scale production of an unmanned drone with full attack and defense capabilities. The 36-foot-long aircraft boasts a 65-foot wingspan but stands just over 12 feet high. This flat profile gives the vehicle a reduced radar signature, which helps it stay undetected during missions. Thanks to the addition of an engine far more powerful than those installed than its predecessors, the MQ-9 can carry up to 3,800 pounds of ordnance across a range of more than 1,200 miles. On top of that, the aircraft boasts some of the most impressive avionics, sensory equipment, and targeting systems of any modern plane allowing it to be easily configured and reconfigured for different assignments. However, what really sets the MQ-9 apart from the competition is its single, rear-facing Honeywell turboprop. This allows the plane to push more air while remaining hard to detect via radar. Having the engine in the back also keeps the noise and vibrations from interfering with the robust forward-mounted sensors. A two-man team controls the MQ-9, typically operating from the ground. One individual acts as the pilot, while another, sometimes two depending on the mission, controls the drone sensors and other vital systems. Since piloting an unmanned aircraft is very different from flying a real plane, MQ-9 crew members require extensive training before attempting to control an actual aircraft inside a real-life combat zone. Fortunately, the U.S. Air Force has set up extensive simulator training centers, like this one at Creech Air Force Base in Nevada. Simulators like this are state-of-the-art, providing a real cockpit experience for crew members. Over the course of several months, these drone operators will perform a variety of missions and solve multiple real-life problems, all without risking the $300 million aircraft.
Though the MQ-9 was the first drone to see heavy use in military applications, the Northrop Grumman RQ-4 Global Hawks makes the ideal aircraft for missions that might be too dangerous for a manned vehicle. Designed for high-altitude, long-range applications, RQ-4 is massive. Boasting a 130-foot wingspan alongside a nearly 50-foot-long fuselage. It features a service ceiling of 60,000 feet and a range of more than 14,000 miles. Like the MQ-9, the Global Hawk is loaded with high-powered sensors, radar, and scanning equipment. Enabling it to penetrate deep into hostile territory. It too is powered by a single engine. But this time, it is a Rolls-Royce turbofan jet engine. Being a slightly older design, the RQ-4 requires regular maintenance in order to keep the aircraft in tip-top shape. This is because operating at higher altitudes can expose the aircraft's sensitive equipment to extremely cold temperatures and increase stress. That's why it is imperative that they be frequently and thoroughly inspected for any potential problems. Should any of this fail mid-flight, it could endanger the mission and potentially expose troops or aircraft crewmen to threats from unfriendly foreign powers. Thanks to the train maintenance crews, the 42 RQ-4s currently in service should continue to perform their jobs for decades to come. More recently, the U.S. Air Force has been experimenting with what it refers to as full-scale aerial target drones. These are essentially standard fighter planes that have been converted to operate via remote control from the ground. In the case of the QF-16, you have a Block General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon that has been outfitted with robust sensors and remote control technology. Like their drone counterparts, these aircraft can now be operated from the ground just as easily as they would be from the cockpit. The very first QF-16 successful unmanned mission occurred in New Mexico on August 17, 2016. The same model was shot down the following year as part of a special weapons exercise. The QF-16 program is not the first time the Air Force has invested in full-size unmanned aerial targets. Previously, Vietnam-era McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantoms were converted in much the same way. Appropriately named QF-4s, these veteran fighter jets proved extremely useful during global aerial and ground exercises where they could simulate incoming planes and perform various attack and evasive maneuvers. Indeed, many experts consider the Phantom to be the last excellent dogfighting plane. Over the years, more than 5,000 of these highly versatile planes were produced. All with the ability to travel at Mach 2.2 and climb as high as 60,000 feet. Before being replaced by the QF-16, the QF-4 proved a formidable opponent throughout unmanned gunnery exercises. There's no telling where unmanned aircraft technology will go in the future. Hi. 
However, as technology continues to become more and more refined, we're almost guaranteed to see more of these remote planes and helicopters being utilized by air forces worldwide. In the end, it is imperative that militaries keep their personnel safe, and drones are the perfect way to perform a wide range of missions while keeping pilots and their crews well out of harm's way. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.